What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take an uncolor corrected clip and match it to a clip that's been previously color corrected to be able to match all the values. Now let's get started. So if you head down here in the timeline, I have this kind of wider shot of these two women talking. It's been adjusted and corrected. And then I have the close up shot that's a little more flat and dry and uncorrected. So we're going to match this close up shot to the wide shot. So let's head up here to the top to the different layouts. We have the editing layout, which we're in currently. I'm going to go next door and click on it. It's going to turn blue and it's going to take me to the color layout. And you notice here to the right, I have the Lumetri color panel opened up. I also have my video scopes open so I can use those for reference to be able to match more accurately. And if you don't have the scope window up, you can always go to window, come down here where it says Lumetri scopes and make sure that's clicked. And you might have different scopes than I do. If you right mouse click, you can pick and choose the ones I do and or you can go down here to the wrench icon. I've also done a previous video about how to read these scopes, which will be helpful if you want to apply that to this video. I'll put the link up above. So let's head over to the Lumetri color panel and we have the basic color correction, the creative, the curves, and then you're gonna have color wheels and match. Click on that, open it up. You're gonna see three different color wheels, one for the shadows, one for the midtones, and one for the highlights. Like I've stated before in my previous color correction videos, I like to work in a certain order. The first step when I adjust anything, I always adjust the tonal values. Make sure that the blacks are pure black, make sure the whites are pure whites, make sure the contrast and the brightness and everything's on point first. Then I'll move into color temperature and adjust those colors. So just by looking at this, we can tell that right here, the zero represents true black and the hundred represents pure white. So we can tell what we're needing here is we need to bring down the shadows and make the black a little darker. So let's head over here to the wills and match section. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click comparison view because we want to compare it to the previous clip we're trying to match. It's going to place the one we currently want to correct with the one that we want to match from. And down here, there's a slider. So no matter how long your timeline is, if it's 10, 20, 30 minutes, you can scrub through the entire timeline. So you can go through and find whichever clip you want to match. If you go back to the scopes, you're going to realize now they're split in half. So the Luma waveform is split in half. You can see kind of an invisible line here where everything on the left-hand side represents the clip here on the left side of the comparison view. Everything on the right hand side represents the clip that we're needing to adjust. And the same thing for the R, G, and B. You can see there's an imaginary kind of line down the middle and the values are different on the left to the right. The benefit of having this split down the middle is when you adjust them, you can see what you're adjusting this clip and you can see it move ever so slightly to be able to match it better. So like I said before, I always start with the lights and the darts the brightness and the contrast. So we're gonna stick in this window and focus on that. So clearly we can see that the shadows need to be lowered. This is much lower, closer to zero, which is a true black. Let's head over to the shadow wheel. Right on the left side, there's a slider that goes up and down. If I bring it up, it brightens up the shadows and you can see the waveform adjust. And if I bring it down, you can tell that it darkens it and lowers the shadows. So we're gonna keep going until that waveform kind of matches the other side as far as the values on the level. Okay, so now these darks are down there with the other darks, the shadows are a little darker. And if we head up to the whites on the highlights up here, we could pull those down a little bit because this is a little off the line of 100. So we'll come over here to the highlights. And we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of drop it down and you'll watch it lower until you feel like it's kind of about there. And you come over back to the midtone. So here in the middle section, it's a little bit lower. This is slightly higher. So we can come to the midtones and take the slider and just bump it up ever so slightly to kind of match it there. So we'll leave it at that. So I'll just show you the comparison. I'm gonna turn that off and turn it back on. So right away, you can see the difference. And when I turn it off, you can also see the waveform adjust when I change it. So you can definitely see how it matches more, but also visually, when you look at the images, clearly it's a better match. So now let's head down to the RGB parade, which are this little section down here. This represents everything in the red channel. This represents everything in the green channel, and this represents everything in the blue channel. Same thing, there's imaginary line. The one on the left represents this, and the one on the right represents the one we're trying to adjust. So if we look at these basically, they're all pretty close. In the red, the midtones are a little bit higher, so we could bump those up a little bit. So we'll come over here. So instead of doing the light and dark, which is the slider on the left, now we're gonna play with the color. So if you want a little more red, grab it and just move it a little closer to the red for the midtones, and you'll see that slightly adjust. And if we come back over here, the highlights look pretty good. The shadows are pretty much the same. The greens are pretty much balanced. On the blue, I do notice the highlights are definitely lower than the highlights in the original. So let's work on the highlights in the blue and raise those up a little bit. So we'll come over to the highlight wheel and we'll go a little closer towards blue and then just watch that raise up a little bit and see how close we can get to give it a nice little match. And as you drag this, it will move slower because it's meant to be subtle. It's meant to be these subtle adjustments that won't look too obvious. Okay, so now we have the blue highlights a little bit higher we brought the center of the midtones on the red just slightly up, brought down the shadows and the highlights a tad. So now they look like a nice clean match. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna turn it off 
and on. Big difference. That's much more flat. There's not a lot of contrast. And you come here, it has a nice little match. It's simple as that. And you can tweak around and play around with this. But having these scopes open and be able to compare them as you slightly tweak them tap by tap makes a massive difference. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm going to undo all these. And the way you undo them is double click on them. So you go to this blue handle, double click, it resets it, even here in the middle, double click and then resets it back to zero. So these are all reset. Now the one thing you can do if you feel like it's fairly close or if you want to just get a good starting point, come up here to where it says face detection and color match, apply match. Because you're working with people, I'm gonna leave this checked, but if I wasn't, I would uncheck that. But I'm gonna keep it checked because obviously I have people in the shot. You come to apply match, essentially this is an auto adjustment. What it's gonna do, it's gonna take all these values. It's gonna say, okay, this clearly is too bright. The shadows aren't dark enough. It's gonna pull those down to match. It's gonna pull the red down a little bit. It's gonna pull the blue down a little bit here and then raise the highlights in the blue. So let me click apply match and watch those waveforms. You're gonna see it do it automatically. There we go. So you saw it drop down a little bit, but like I said, it still needs to be tweaked a little bit more. This is just kind of a good starting off point if you wanna get a base. Sometimes it does a very good job, and if you're in a hurry, you can just kind of do that and, and keep it pushing. But I would come in and I'd clearly see that needs to be tweaked a little bit more. So I'd come over here to the shadows and I'd bring it down slightly again to get those a little more close. And even the highlights in the red, I still think are a little high. So I'll come down and tweak that just a slight bit. But overall, the automatic does a great job. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. That being said, have a great day. Later.